All right, so I'm back in London. I guess I didn't pack running shoes and I thought I'll definitely have shoes in London. I have a, I rent a room here. I thought I definitely have shoes and I can't find any, but let me look for some shoes. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about today, if it's not too windy and you can hear me, is when you don't feel like going for a run, what should you do? And so, of course, we all have days where you don't really feel like going for a run. And then how do you make a good decision on whether or not you should go train? And so I just did a long haul flight 10 hours from Los Angeles to London. And so naturally I'm tired. I didn't feel like going for a run, but here we are. Okay, and so one of the first tips I give is pick a run that you really like. And so then you're not really going for a run you're going to do something that you really like. And that would be my best piece of advice right off the bat. And so we're on our way to Bushy Park, which is one of my favorite runs in the world. And so I'm not really doing a run. I'm going to do something I love to do. Okay, and so my next bit of advice, I'm obviously now showing you the park and I've paused my watch and I'm just walking a little bit because I know that getting out today for any kind of a run, and that means if it's a walk jog, if it's really slow, it doesn't matter. Getting out for some kind of a run is better than no run. And so the advice there is, Pick somewhere you really like, but when you get there and when you're going for your run, just take all pressure away. No pressure on the pace, no pressure on the distance, just see how you feel. But let's have a little think about was it a good idea to run, or perhaps some days it's not. So this point right here is roughly 500 meters into where we do 1K reps. And some of the best athletes in the world have came here and done some very fast 1K reps. Go on Strava, have a look at the record for the 1K. I think it's like maybe 232, 234, but it's not mine. I don't hold that record but no records today. And so let's pretend as we all do, you've woke up and you've kind of just call it, woke up on the wrong side of bed. You don't feel good. You're not motivated and you don't feel like going for your run. What should you do? The first thing you need to do is track some kind of metric other than, of course, your feelings, which your feelings are important, but sometimes feelings lie to us. And so have a metric such as rest and heart rate, heart rate variability, something that you can check that is a fact, and it'll either be a fact that your rest and heart rate is high or perhaps your heart rate variability, hold on. And so you might find that that rest and heart rate's a little bit high or maybe that heart rate variability has dropped. And that can sometimes be a sign that it's not that something bad is gonna happen, but maybe you're about to get ill. Most of the time, 
if you're not that motivated, it's usually when you're perhaps about to get sick or maybe you already are sick. And so you need to make a decision that says, do I just not feel like running or is there something factually wrong and I shouldn't run? If you just don't feel like running, well, you better go run. Because how the psychology works is when you start to stack too many days, you don't feel like running, so you don't run. When you start to do that too often, you're teaching that brain bad habits. Don't get into that habit. If you're starting to get some form of illness, well, that's a lot different. And so let's say it's the third day in a row. If it's the first day, I would still run. Sometimes the rest and heart rate's high. Sometimes the heart rate variability drops. That's very normal. If it's the third day in a row and you don't feel like running, perhaps that's the day to decide it logically makes sense to give your body a full rest day. You can say to yourself, it's day three. I already didn't want to run yesterday. Didn't want to run the day before. When I was out there running, I didn't feel good. And so all of a sudden, it might make logical sense to rest. But if you don't track any metrics, it's very hard to know if it's just laziness. Bushy Park is, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's kind of hard to imagine that this is fairly like, not like center of London by any means, but not a kick in the ass off London. And it's so beautiful, but it did a, uh, <laughs> that wind is a nice reminder that you're back in the UK, which everyone will appreciate. I think I got soft. There was no wind where I was training. It's beautiful. Okay, so the next thing that you need to remember is get your nutrition in a good place if you're not that motivated. Get your hydration in a good place because perhaps your body is talking to you and it's telling you that it's just, it's not right. It's not ready to run. And so help the body. But that's so, so important to listen to the body and give the body what it needs physically. Try to ignore those emotions. If you sort of, if you go down a rabbit hole of always giving your emotions what they want, it's not going to get you very far. Give your body what it needs physically, good food, good hydration, and I bet within a few days you'll want to run. Okay, so my next little tip, and it might seem silly, but have a fresh pair of shoes, a nice like bit of running kit that you like to run in, maybe have a little phone carrying case, pick a really nice playlist and these are all going to help encourage you to go get the run done. So you get to wear the running kit that maybe it's your favorite, a pair of shoes that hopefully aren't covered in mud, soaking wet. Nobody wants to run in shoes that are drenched in mud, soaking wet. Put on that 
really enjoyable playlist. You might actually enjoy the run, but you can see it is, it doesn't always have to feel like training. So you're getting out for a run, you didn't really feel like going, and I bet you end up loving it. And in a way, it kind of becomes therapy. Maybe your mood is a bit lower, and maybe it's got nothing to do with running. Maybe you actually, without knowing it yet, really needed that run that day. Okay, so what if this rot or lack of motivation, what if it's been going on for a while? You need to troubleshoot. I love the idea of getting a whiteboard. It doesn't have to be real. It can be if you want, but you get the whiteboard and you put in the middle lack of motivation call it bit of a rut and so it's been going on a while you've you've ate better you've tried to sleep better you've got yourself hydrated but you're still just you're still just not feeling it you're not feeling running's not giving you the same energy that it was And so sometimes you need to change the stimulus. And so perhaps you could enter a race and that gives you a little boost. Perhaps you could enter a race that you don't normally do. Trail race, road race, park run, cross country, something exciting. By entering a race that you wouldn't normally have done, it might inject a new little lease of life into the body, into the brain that says, hey, let's do this. I know I don't normally do this kind of race, but who knows, maybe it'll go really well. And it's kind of like you can absolutely love an album. You know, the Beatles, doesn't matter. Bob Marley, you can play it and play it, but eventually you can get a little bit sick of it. And that's even things that you love. And so sometimes with running, you just get a bit bored doing the same thing. And so change the record. Okay, and so on the topic of changing things, you can also change footwear. And that might seem crazy, but sometimes just by, runners are kind of creatures of habit. Same, same, same. Monday, same run. Tuesday, same session. Wednesday, same run. Probably wore the same style of shoes for goodness knows how long and before everybody panics and thinks oh no I'll get injured if I change this or that it didn't stop you putting on a pair of super shoes <laughs> and so the whole like oh no if I change shoes I'm going to get injured no if you wear a overpronation shoe because you overpronate we'll get a different overpronation shoe but by perhaps changing brand or even just picking the same type of shoe within the same brand honestly it can give you a new like lease of life I love getting new shoes I almost go for a run I need to show you this part I almost go for a run 
just because of the new pair of shoes. Call me crazy, but I think that's fun. New pair of shoes, new lease of life. You're all excited, are they good, are they not? Maybe they'll suck. But this is also gorgeous, this part. This is one of my favorite parts of Bushy Park. It's a shame there's no deer around. We could have said hello. But it is absolutely beautiful. But yeah, perhaps consider changing footwear. Don't change the type of shoe, because if you've got that tested and that's important, don't change the type of shoe. But it might just change things up. It's amazing how well our psychology adapt from little changes. It loves it. And yeah, sometimes running can get a bit boring. And so change it up a bit. So my next piece of advice is remember a time when you were running really well and you felt really good and you're really fit and running just felt easy. And look, the only way to, thanks guys, the only way to get back to a day like that is to get out there and get the run done. Fitness just does not build itself. So often when you get in a bad rut, you're not feeling like running, and so you haven't been running, you also lose fitness. And as you lose more and more fitness, running becomes, you guessed it, harder and harder. So the reason I told you that is because this little loop, so there's a little kind of 2K loop right here. You can park in a car park. It's over there, over that direction. And this is a bit of a brag, but after I ran 6108 for the half marathon, I came into this park four days later with Mo Farah. And me and Mo Farah did an amazing session. And I just remember feeling so good. And I don't feel like that today, but even just that memory really inspires me. It makes me remember I can. I can do this. And maybe that's what you need to remind yourself where you've been before, where you'd like to get to again, and get that run done so that you get a bit closer. I knew I would find some deer. This is one of the most beautiful and I guess iconic. I told my mom that I was going to YouTube today when I came back off the flight and I said I was going to do it around what about those days you don't want to run and she said oh show the deer and so these deer are pretty famous around like the royal parks and like I, I don't want to get too close because then I just upset them and it's not like <laughs> I mean I could be lying and maybe it is out of fear for myself but it's actually not I'm, I'm not really afraid of the deer but you can upset them. Like this is their, we're in their world right now. This is like their natural habitat. What is it about runners that think we own the place? I, this happened the other day. A runner like ran out in front of a car and then really like shouted at the car. And it's like, well, no, you're on a road, you know? Cars go on the road. But this is the deer in their natural habitat. I'm like, what's his name? David Attenborough but I'm not going to upset them. I'm going to leave them alone. But I did think we might see some deer and I'm glad I did. And that, when we come back to one of those first points about running somewhere that you really like and you really enjoy it, it doesn't matter if that's your treadmill in your, in your home garage, it doesn't matter. But go somewhere that you're comfortable, find your little happy place, set no expectations, no pressure. If you run for five minutes, it doesn't matter. But you're just, you're just sending a signal to the brain that says, just because you don't feel like running today, doesn't mean that I'm not gonna run. And, oh, 
That was a close one, guys. Oh my God. Like I need another fall. But this is what happens. If your brain's saying, I don't feel like running, I can't be bothered, and you start off, and you're five minutes in, and you're knackered, well, just walk back to the car, it's okay. But far better to try than to let your brain just dictate. Because the brain gets very good at dictating, and suddenly, feelings, emotions, they're gonna control your life. Okay, so there's no doubt about the fact that running and sport, it's kind of like this metaphor for life. And so some of these decisions you're making, it's not about the run. It's not about just getting a little run done and building another tiny day of fitness. Although running takes a lot of very good decisions and a lot of tiny days strung together to get very good at it. But if you let your psychology become the dictator, ah, oh, we don't feel like doing that today. I remember one day, it was probably about a week or two, and I wasn't that motivated. My agent, Stephen, said to me, he said, do you think I always wanna answer the phone? This man talks on the phone probably 30 calls a day. 30. And he said, you think I always want to answer that phone? I said, I don't know. No. Correct. You don't always have to want to run. <laughs> Can I show your dog on the camera? Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> Aww. Well, that was a lovely little surprise, little Weimaraner called Patty. I'm so jealous. I wish I could have a dog, but I just travel way too much. But like I said, don't let, we have this like, you have a gut feeling, right? And gut feeling is like, oh, I don't know. I don't trust this or, oh, I don't know. I'm not feeling this. Ah, it's a dangerous one. Believe me, I have ADHD. If I trusted, <laughs> if I trusted every gut feeling or what I, what I predicted to be gut feeling, there's no like, there's no gut feeling radar. You don't know if it's gut feeling or not. Like I said, you might just be bored. And so, have, have rules. If three days have gone by and your rest and heart rate's still high, you have to take a bit, sorry. If three days have gone by and your rest and heart rate's still high, you must take it a bit easier. That's a very simple rule. It takes feelings completely out of it and it's fact. If a week or two, has gone by and you're really struggling and you're not feeling good and your train is not going well and your times are slowing perhaps you've overtrained perhaps you're not eating enough perhaps you need to hydrate are you sleeping enough are you stressed at work so start to troubleshoot all these little things but if it's just a case of you don't feel like it. And then you sort of have a think about it and you say to yourself, sugar. <laughs> you realize I just said sugar there <laughs> and didn't swear. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> but then you realize, do you know what? <laughs> the more I think about this, I wasn't really that bothered with that work project today. And then you say to yourself, do you know what else? I've got really lazy with dinner, what I'm cooking. I'm not putting any effort into anything at the minute. And if that's the case, then running is probably the single biggest contributor to get you out of what might just be a little psychological rut. Start to make 
some better decisions, start to make some decisions, like I said, that are good for the body physically and not just what you think you feel like doing. Once you start looking after the body's needs physically, it won't be long before things turn, flip, and all of a sudden, I guarantee it, psychologically, you're gonna be in a brilliant place. Fitness is gonna be better, everything. But that's all I have for you today. I'm gonna to finish my run. I'm doing about 14 kilometers. And for the rest of my run, honestly, on that note, I just wanna put the camera down. I'm gonna take the headphones out and just listen to the birds, the wind, the famous wind, and just enjoy it. But I hope you enjoyed that. Like, subscribe, give me some love. Comment below if you have tips for other people to get out of a rut and take care. Happy running. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs>